Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Well, you better be. You wouldn't want to be cursed and miserable, would you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Master. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. How many of y'all are grateful? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 3. Father, you said it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. So, Holy Spirit, we ask that the anointing teach us, train us, and prepare us in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 3. Wow. In verse 1. We'll start at verse 1 anyways. <clears throat> and let's speak it, because what you speak is what you eat. So if the word is life, when you speak life, you eat life. That means life is changing in you. Amen. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. Wow. Wow. I couldn't speak to you as spiritual people. Spiritual people, those that their new spirit rules by guidance of the Holy Spirit in their temple. Is everybody with me? Amen. In other words, it rules over your soul and it rules over your flesh. I want to give you a quick example after my visitation from the Lord, which I never read the Bible. I didn't know the Word of God. But once I was filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit and delivered by the presence of God, my spirit man, my new spirit man, had dominion over my soul and my flesh. So anytime that my soul wanted to reflect, because see, your soul has a voice and so does your flesh. And anytime that my soul, because my soul wasn't converted yet, but my spirit was strong enough to say no to it. Does everybody, does everybody understand? That's the importance of being baptized in the Holy Spirit and being empowered from on high until your soul is converted. Because until your soul is converted, your soul serves your flesh, not your spirit. So your spirit, man, must have dominion over your soul and your flesh. Amen. That's why there's a lot of people who can quote scripture, but can't do it, practice it. Amen. And we've talked about getting in line and living out of the word. And stop living out of the soul and start living out of the spirit. Because see, when you get a new spirit and you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, your spirit is now in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to guide you and teach you and going to tell you things to come. So when your soul tries to come up, because it hasn't been converted yet, it still loves the ways of self, the ways of the world, he says, say no. No! Does everybody get it? Say no to those desires. Say no to that will. Say no. And he gives you the power to say no until that soul is converted. So the main function that the Lord wants to do through his spirit is convert the soul. So it now serves the spirit and not the flesh. That's one of the problems. Not enough individuals are allowing the conversion of the soul. Did you ever heard granola? Those are nutty and fruity people because the soul is not converted. So their soul is not submissive to the spirit, so they go by and everything that they feel. Believe me, I've been in places where I'm telling you it's been crazy. Everybody okay? And he said, look, and I couldn't speak to you because you're still what? Babes. Babes. You're carnal. 
carnal is the human sinful nature of self. Carnal means the human sinful nature of self. It's what you were born with. The human sinful nature of self. Now you got to remember that your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your desires, your imagination. Associated with your feelings. And until the soul is converted, it is unable to interpret or understand the will of God. It must be completely converted. Have you ever been, ever, ever been around somebody that's up and down their emotions? One day they're wonderful, the next day they're miserable. In fact, sometimes it could be in the morning or in the afternoon because their soul's not converted yet. Do you, where do you think oppression comes from? Unconverted soul. Oh! They always go by how they feel. So they live out of the soul instead of the spirit. Oh, glory. Are you ready? <laughs> All right, let's go a little further. And verse, all right, let's start at verse 2. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able. So he was expecting them to be filled with the Spirit and allowing to desire the conversion of the soul, but they weren't willing. He says, for you are still what? Carnal. Now what's carnal? Carnal is the human sinful nature of self. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like what? Mere men. What a rebuke. You're still acting like a human. For one says, I am of Paul, another, I am of Paulus. Are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So that neither he who plants is anything, nor neither who waters, but God who gives the what? Increase. Let's go a little further. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he builds on it. In other words, he's talking about converting that soul. Be careful in how you build. For no other foundation can anyone lay that than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus, or Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, which is gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work, which he has built on, endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will, receive, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as through fire. In other words, there are many who are building out of the soul and not out of the spirit. Those things that are built out of the soul does not last. Because they're built out of emotion. Does everybody understand what's happening? There's a lot of people going out and doing a lot of things, but God ain't sent them. So they do what they feel like doing instead of being sent because there's really no communion in the spirit. So they read the word of God. The word says, go feed the poor, this and that. And they go feed the poor. They go do this. They go do that. But God ain't sent them to do it. He had another mission for them. So it won't be counted to them because the worst thing you can do is be successful in the wrong assignment. That's why he requires relationship. That's what he said to his disciples. Who do you say that I am? Has everybody got it? That's why we go through training. Amen? Amen. Woohoo! If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God? 
and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So Paul rebuked these believers because of their carnal appetite. Everyone say carnal appetite. In other words, they had a strong desire to fulfill the sinful nature because the soul was not converted. See, you get a new spirit, but you got to convert your soul. That's your responsibility to turn it over. Romans 8. But when you get filled, that's why it's important. You get saved and then you get filled with the Holy Spirit. You get saved, you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because that's going to that's be your quicker converting of the soul. If you're cooperating with the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, verse 1. Let's speak it. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement. So there is a requirement for me and you. And it is to be led by the spirit. Does everybody get it? He said, wait a minute, wait a minute, I want to go back here. He said, in verse 1, those, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So there's a difference. Because by walking according to the Spirit, it is a requirement, it is a righteous requirement, which the spirit, of the, uh, the spirit of life, the spirit of the law of life is to deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Amen. Amen? So what you're doing is constantly denying yourself. You're picking up the cross, a sword, you're a fighter, and you're following because you cannot follow without a fight because there's always resistance coming against you by the powers of darkness. And if you're not willing to remove them, they will remove you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let's go. That righteous requirement, verse 4, of the law might, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in who? Us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Now, wait a minute. The mind is associated with the soul. So what he's saying is the soul is submitting to the flesh. And the desires of the flesh, that sinful fallen nature. So someone whose soul is not converted yet is still submitting to the natural sinful nature that serves darkness and not light. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For it to be what? Carnally minded is what? Death. Death. Wow. Wow. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity or hatred towards God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor... And it can't be. So your old man will never submit, does everybody get it, to the things of God. That's why God gave you a new spirit. Now your soul will never submit to God until it's converted. And that's our responsibility. So that you no longer live according to the way you think, how you feel, and influences. So how many people, think about this, how many people live according to their past? They live in the present according to their past and not live in the present according to their future. That's the difference between living out of the soul and living out of the spirit. Because you're living from the future to the present because you believe his promises and your soul is being converted so that there is a true and pure interpretation. You're allowing the flow of the Holy Spirit to take dominion over everything. He's constantly guiding your spirit and you're letting him reign. 
you got to start to think in the area, what voice is the ruling voice in this temple? Is it the soul? Is it the flesh? Or is it the spirit? Is everybody okay? Amen. Ooh, glory. Okay, now, verse 8. So then those who are in the flesh, can they please God? No, no. no. But you are not in the flesh. Oh, wait a minute. So then those who are in the flesh cannot be please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, or if the spirit of God is ruling you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. So if you're not led, if you're not ruled by the spirit of God, you're not his. That's the difference between those that the seed remains in the, or the seed is removed. Remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's trying to always steal the word of God from you. Amen? So those who set their soul, their minds, have a carnal appetite as a result of an unconverted soul. The soul. Now, I want you to grab hold of something because the world is considered Egypt. Not only, it's a Babylonian system, but it's called Egypt. Egypt means house of bondage. So anything that's submitting under to the world or the rule of the world, the principalities, powers of darkness, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, is ruled by Egypt. And that means that this house is in bondage then. It's called the house of bondage. So when the soul is not converted, it is considered a servant of Egypt. It serves the flesh and not the spirit. As long as you operate in the natural soulish realm, you are vulnerable to satanic temptations. You are vulnerable to attacks and false guidance by familiar spirits. Total freedom. Hallelujah. Everyone say total freedom. Comes when the new spirit man is dominant and controlling the lifestyle of the soul and the body. With no resistance to the flow of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Total freedom comes when the new man, your new spirit man, dominates and controls. The lifestyle of the soul and body. Where there is no resistance to the pure flow of the Holy Spirit. There's no resistance. There's yielding. You're looking for it. You're wanting it. You want to be led. You want to be convicted. You want to be exposed. You want the righteous to slap you in the head. Why? Because you want to stay in line. Is everybody okay? Romans 12. If you don't have that desire, you're lost. <laughs> L-O-S-T, living outside of salvation's truth. Romans 12, verse 1, we've heard this before. Brethren, by the mercies of God, in verse 1, that you do what? Present. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, or what? Responsibility. Your responsibility. If that desire isn't there, your soul is not converted yet. Your soul is still a servant of flesh in Egypt, and not the spirit. And your spirit, man, isn't strong enough to overtake it. Does everybody get that? Verse 2, and do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind or the renewing of what? Your soul. That you may what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So renewing of your soul is to prove or cooperate with the Holy Spirit manifesting the will of God with no resistance to the Holy Spirit but yielding to the Holy Spirit. You want to do the will of God. You no longer just say it. You no longer are trying it. 
You are doing it. You have put yourself in a place of not trying because there's always an excuse when I, well, I'm tried. Oh, you little soulish flesh creature. We're to be doers, not triers. Amen. Amen? Oh, glory. Third, third John. Three John. Carnal appetite. <laughs> we need to kill it. But it's got to be converted first. Carnal appetite. Well, you've got to understand, what's a carnal appetite? Well, it's lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, addiction, perversion, pornography. All of these things are carnal appetites. Selfish ambitions, pride, arrogance. All those are carnal appetites. John 3 and verse 2, what does it say? Beloved, I what? Come on, is anybody there yet? Amen. <laughs> Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Everyone say prosper. prosper. Grow. Grow. Mature. Mature. Good. We're getting there. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers or is converted. Converted to what? The way God thinks, the way God sees. Does everybody get it? For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. So is the conversion of a soul going to be manifesting, desiring truth? See, you want truth. You hate lying. You hate deception. You hate wickedness. You hate dishonesty. You love truth. You love to be honest. Because that's the character of Christ. Verse 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and as for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will what? You will do well, because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers, what? For the truth. Wow. As the soul matures, it begins to submit to all truth, living, walking, and expressing the living truth of Christ Jesus with the divine nature of righteousness and holiness and reverence through the Holy Spirit and guided by the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Carnal appetite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Amen. Proverbs 23 and verse 1. Let's do it. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given to appetite. Do not desire his what? Do not desire his what? Delicacies. For they are what? They're what? Deceptive food. It's called junk food. Because behind it is lies and deceptions. You know, the New Age movement has all of this wonderful, beautiful pictures and all of this. They got partial truth, but behind it is all lies and deception. It opens the door to demons. Remember, the word says that in the, in the last days that there will be many deceiving and seducing Demonic forces and doctrines of demons. People with itching ears. They'll walk away and fade from the truth to go after something that pleases the soul because the soul hasn't been converted over to Christ. 
It's still serving the flesh. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Do not overwork to be what? Rich. Look, there's nothing wrong with being wealthy. But there are people that live and work to be rich. Does everybody get that? That live and work to be rich is an unconverted soul. Because of your own understanding, cease. The own understanding means that soul is not an understanding of Christ. Verse 5. You will set your eyes on that which is not, for riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser or a compromiser, nor desire his what? Delicacies. In other words, be careful who you hang with. You may sit down at the same table and eat some of their same things and not even realizing that they're feeding you deceptive food, spiritual deceptive food. As a man thinks, so he is, right? So look at it. As you begin to associate, associations will bring impartations, won't they? You hang around with unbelievers, you will become an unbeliever. And you will live out of the soulish arena that serves the flesh, and the end result is separation from God. Ooh. Verse 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel so you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your what? Your pleasant words. <laughs> so these are areas that we must be careful of. Man given to carnal appetite, worldliness, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. In other words, he's serving under the house of bondage, which we call Egypt. Because the soul hasn't been converted. That is your responsibility, my responsibility to convert that soul, not God's. Psalm 51. Now let's go to Deuteronomy 6 for a first. Carnal appetite. Some of you are going, man, my soul ain't converted. Praise God. Now you know. Amen. Get it converted. So we can all be like-minded. Deuteronomy 6. Glory. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 6, verse 10. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it, please. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you a large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of good things which you did not fill, hooned out wells which you did not dig, vineyards and oil trees, which olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of what? Bondage. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and shall not take oaths in his name. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the peoples who are, are all around you. See, this is one of the things. People are still going after the gods. Uh, people don't realize because there's such deception. When you are going after the same desire someone else is going after that's not a believer, you're going after other gods and don't even know it because the soul is not being converted, but it's staying unconverted and serving the flesh. Why? Because these gods are called demons and they are behind the influence of individuals and their desires to keep us away from the true conversion of the soul so that we may be like-minded, like-hearted, and like will with the character and the divine nature and the divine power of Christ Jesus. Verse 15. Let's say 14 again. You shall not go after 
other gods, the gods of the peoples who are all around you. For the Lord your God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord your God be aroused against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. You shall not diligently Keep, you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, his testimonies, and his statutes, which he commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, and that you may go in and possess the good land of which the Lord swore to your fathers, to cast out all your what? Enemies from before you, as the Lord has spoken. Wow. God wants to go before you as a consuming fire. Amen? House of bondage. Many people are still in. Psalm 51. Carnal appetite. You know, it's amazing, everybody, so many people quote, well, the truth shall set you free. But there's a lot of people that know truth, but they ain't free. Because the soul hasn't been converted because they don't love truth. They may know it up here, but they're still living out of the mind part, not out of the spirit part. Because see, that's where you, when you worship and everything else, man, it's no longer mind stuff. It's hard. Because you're in love. God wants to bring, see, he wants to convert that soul to where the manifestation is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit so that you are in love with him and you will die for him. If you're not willing to die for him, your soul ain't converted yet. Amen. And there's a process of converting the soul, isn't there? Verse 1, Psalm 51. Y'all want the truth, right? Amen. You want to know what God wants to know? I mean, what? What he wants us to know? Amen. Believe me, he already knows it. Amen. Verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Wow, what a request, huh? Okay, let's go further. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. Oh. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me because you and I were born in sin. That nature... That fallen nature is a sinful nature. Amen. Behold, you what? Desire. You desire truth in the inward parts. What are those inward parts? Your soul. And in, and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me what? A clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And do not cast me away from your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. So many people think, oh man, the Holy Spirit ain't never going to leave me. Oh really? He will. He will live from you. God never forsakes us. He's always waiting. But I can tell you the Holy Spirit, when he has grieved, he'll depart and back off. And the one thing that begins to replace the Holy Spirit is a familiar spirit. Amen. And the familiar spirit will always begin to promote emotion in yourself. Is everybody okay? Verse 12. Restore to me what? The joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. What a powerful prayer. 
That was a desire from the heart. Amen? First John chapter 2. Truth in the soul. You serve truth. Why? Because Jesus is called truth. Truth is no longer just a word. It becomes a person. Amen. So when you speak of truth, you're always seeing the word of God as the per true person. He's the word. Amen. The word of God is Jesus. He is the word. But he's also truth. So when you speak truth, it's about a person. You're in relationship with truth because you love truth. You serve truth. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. Do not what? Love. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That is in the soul. The lust of the flesh... The lust of the eyes and the pride of life is in the soul. And until that soul is converted, there, that lust will have dominion over you. And that soul will serve the flesh. And that flesh, the wages of sin is death. Verse 17. The world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard... That the Antichrist is coming, even now there are many Antichrists have come, by which it, it, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Why? Because they still maintain a carnal appetite. But you have an anointing. Hello? From the Holy One, and you know all things. Why? Because the soul has been converted. It's submitting to the Spirit. And the anointing, which is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, is now ruling with your spirit over your soul and over your flesh. Let me share something with you. If you do not have dominion inside, you will not have dominion outside. Very important. But you have the Holy Spirit. It has led to the conversion of your soul, able to know or interpret and understand all things that pertain to kingdom business, kingdom living, kingdom desires. Amen. Psalm 92. Is everybody okay? Glory, verse 12, Psalm 92, verse 12. Let's speak it, please. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Why? Because training comes through the house of the Lord. Does everybody get it? And also associated with his presence. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall what? Flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Planted in the house of God, in his presence, in his will, doing his desires. No longer carnal appetite, but eternal appetite, allowing the continuance check with Christ. In other words, you always check in with him. You're no longer checking in how you feel. Does everybody get it? The check of the soulish realm is done with. You're no longer checking how I feel. You're checking in with Christ. You're checking with him and what he says and not how you feel. So we are checking with Christ who is the head through the Holy Spirit, not with the soul or allowing the soulish man to dictate but by keeping the Lord before you in all things. That's when you know your soul is converting. Because the Lord is always before you. Always before you. That's when you know you're in relationship. If the Lord's not before you, there's not a relationship. 
Psalm 16. Verse 7, please. Psalm 16, 7. What's it say? I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. Remember, when God gives me and you counsel, it's counsel, correction, and direction for protection. Amen. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Oh, this is powerful. See, when the Lord is before you, again, there's that relationship. You will not be moved, no matter what. Doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but you won't be moved. Because see, when people have a tendency to run back to Egypt instead of running to the throne, they run to the phone. And they try to find someone that will agree with them. Instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to bring conviction, counsel, correction, and direction. That's what he was saying. He said, man, I, I, I thank you for the counsel. I bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night season. I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand, and I shall not be moved. Those that are being moved out of position is because the Lord's not before them. And they've allowed, even when the soul has been converted, they've allowed it. To diminish. See, the enemy's after your soul. Does everybody get this? He's after your soul. He can't touch your spirit. He's after your soul. So he's trying to get to your thoughts. He's trying to get to your emotions. He's trying to get to your desires. He's trying to change your appetite. So it becomes carnal instead of godly. If he can change your appetite, he has access to you. Is everybody okay? Amen. Verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. Why? Because it's taken dominion. The, the spirit is now, now the soul is no longer serving the flesh. The soul is serving the spirit. And now there's dominion over the flesh. My flesh also shall rest in hope. You will not leave my soul in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Are you ready? Verse 11. You will show me the path of life. And what else? In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore. Set the Lord always before you. A converted soul of submission to the spirit and not to the flesh. Verse thir uh, Psalm 37. Verse 37. Hallelujah. In verse 1, Psalm 37, verse 1. Do not what? Fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and do what? Feed on his faithfulness. That's a different appetite, isn't it? Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because those desires will no longer be from the old soulish. They'll be from a converted soul, which is his desires. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as a light and your justice as a noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him and do not fret because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass cease from anger and forsake wrath and do not fret it only causes what harm for evildoers shall be cut off but those who wait on the Lord they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while and the wicked shall be no more indeed you will look carefully for his place but it shall be no more but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Wow. A converted soul will feed on his faithfulness and his word. And Psalm 103. Psalm 103. 
Now we are living out of the word, not out of the emotions. Psalm 103, in verse 1. Bless the Lord, all my, all my, all my mind, my will, my emotions, my imaginations, my desires, my soul. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And do not forget all his benefits. See, a converted soul is always expecting the promises of God to be released. There's no doubt that they're coming. Sometimes we just don't know when, unless God reveals it to you. But you know it's coming. Forget not all his benefits, who forgives your iniquities, who heals your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Daily. Daily. You can get younger. You can ask my wife. She still tells me I act like a kid. Bless the Lord, a converted soul receives the benefits of his covenant father from the covenant word. See, now you're a covenant child. All the blessings from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and promises have been sent down to you through Jesus and much more now. Oh, glory. Psalm 34. Oh, yes. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord when? When I feel like it. When I don't feel like it. All the time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. My soul, my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions, my desires, my imagination shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad and magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he what? And he heard me. And he delivered me from all of my fears. And where is fear? It's in the soul. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him, reverence, honor, and respect the Lord, and delivers them. Again, this angel can kill 185,000 people. Oh, what? Taste. Change that appetite and see that the Lord is good. Because see, once that appetite begins to change and you taste the goodness of the Lord, you want more. You, don't, you do not want to go back to junk food. You want more and you want more. But it's your responsibility to make sure that you're eating of the delicacies from God and not the delicacies from the enemy. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want or lack to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Why? Because you know his promises and covenant are true. He's making a way to get something to you no matter what. The problem is, is an unconverted soul is easily swayed and misses God all the time. Come, you children, listen to me, and I'll teach you the fear and reverence of the Lord, who is a man who desires life and loves many days, that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and do what? Pursue it. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. He hears. His ears are open to their cry. And the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord does what? He hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, humble, 
and save such as they have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Why? Because there's going to be resistance all the time. The enemy is going to resist you and try to reconvert your soul even when it's after it's converted. Many of the afflictions that are righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all of them. He guards his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Changing the appetite. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. In verse 6, what does it say? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be what? They're going to be filled. Well, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you have a different appetite. Yeah. Yeah. Your appetite has changed. You no longer have a carnal appetite. You have a godly appetite. Does everybody get that? So now you desire, your desires are for kingdom, for the king, and the lost as you reject carnal appetites. 2 Corinthians 10. Hallelujah. Oh, we're getting a lot of scriptures tonight. Praise God. Second Corinthians 10, verse 3. Second Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the physical realm, we do not war according to the physical realm or the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. Under the human nature. The sinful nature, and not under the natural nature. But our mighty and God for pulling down what? Strongholds. And what's a stronghold? A memory lie. See, a memory lie, remember, a memory lie goes into the soul. And it becomes a stronghold. And where that stronghold is, because of that memory lie, it's attached to a spirit, too. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, which is the truth, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So we see that our warfare is not physical, it is spiritual, and the warfare is against in the soul. Because the enemy is always trying to convert your soul back to become a carnal appetite. We are fighting that constantly. That's how he gets to me and you. Psalm 19. Do you ever get around somebody that's all there is woe is me? They got a woe is me spirit. It's a spirit of oppression. And then you got the baby Huey spirit. It's all out of the soul. Psalm 19, in verse 7. Psalm 19, verse 7. Is everybody there? Amen. Glory. Let's speak it together, please. The law is perfect, converting the soul. Now, the law is the word of God, and it's also the, the law of the spirit, where you are denying yourself, picking up the cross, and following. Amen? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. And the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is what? In keeping them there is what? Great reward. So we see the laws associated with the word of God and the law of the spirit of life, so that you and I are constantly in denial of self, 
a fighter because we pick up the sword and fight. We are followers. There is great reward in a converted soul, producing godly appetite of righteousness and truth. There is a great reward of maintaining that. Isaiah 31. Isaiah 31. When you see the word woe, it means without eternity. W-O-E. Woe. Woe to those who go down to what? Egypt for what? Help. Uh-oh. Soul is being reconverted again. And rely on horses. We don't have to do that today, but praise God. <laughs> Who trust in chariots because they are many. And in horsemen because they are very strong. But who do not look to the Holy One of Israel. Nor seek the Lord because the Lord's not before them. Yet he also is wise and will bring disaster. And will not call back his words. He will arise against the house of evildoers. And against the help of those who work iniquity. Now, the Egyptians are men and not God. Now, I want you to look at something because God looks at those who are under the world as Egyptians. Does everybody get it? Why? Because they're in contact, they're associated with the house of bondage. It is a Babylonian system, but as a house of bondage. That's what the world is. It is ruled by deception. It's ruled by Satan's kingdom. Christ had to penetrate this realm in the, in the rule of Satan's kingdom and pay the price for me and you so we can come under his rule, left us the Holy Spirit and weapons to fight so that we can proclaim the promises of God as covenant children. See, many people don't even know who the heck they are. They don't even know the promises of God or what their covenant is. And listen, the devil is not going to tell you God's covenant and your promises. In fact, he's going to try and steal everything. And you ever sign something and not realize what the, you signed? Until the bill collector comes? Oh, snap, I didn't know that. I didn't see that fine print. Because the soul wanted it so badly, it ignored all the garbage. Amen? Hallelujah. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. And their horses are flesh and not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, both he who helps will fall and he who is helped will fall down. They all will perish. Those who go back to what? Egypt. Woe to them who go back to the ways of Egypt. Hmm? Why? Because they've gone back to carnal appetite. You know, it's amazing. If you've ever seen the movie Matrix, the dude that finally betrays them all wants to come out of the arena to go back into Egypt because he liked the taste of steak and lust and fame. He was willing to give up. I'm going to close at Hebrews 10. Carnal appetite. When you see the matrix and the spirit is totally different. Hebrews 10 and verse 26. Carnal appetites need conversion of the soul so we get godly appetites. Is everybody there? Amen. Verse 26. Whoa, 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 whoa. We will read this together. <laughs> For if we what? If we what? If we sin. If we sin when? Willfully. If we choose to sin, say no to God, we're going to allow that unconverted soul, to serve the flesh, if we willfully say, forget it, I'm going to do what I want to do. 
after we've received the knowledge of the truth, everybody received the knowledge of the truth here tonight? Amen. Okay. There is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, you are no longer covered. You die in that condition. You end up in hell. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who's rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counting the blood of covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which, after you were illuminated, you were endured great struggle with suffering. Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who so treated for you had compassion on me and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves. Where? In heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just live by faith. Now faith is out of the soul. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. So does everybody understand how it is important? Because the enemy is after your soul. If he can get after your soul and get your soul, he can get your spirit. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed that has been imparted in us bring such a desire to the conversion of the soul so that Christ has true dominion, that our spirit man be strong and say no to anything that would bring any falseness or corruptible seed into our soul. So that our soul now is submissive to the spirit and not to the flesh. So Lord, we commit our spirit, soul, and body in flesh to you tonight as a living sacrifice. We ask for your mercies and your grace and for your endurance to be established in us so we may see things all the way, tr all the way through and be sons and daughters that please you with a converted soul in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.